Best-selling author of My First 40, the CEO of Vector Choice Technology, Mr. Will Nobles. Oh my God, I just saw my best friend die. That's what I was thinking one night leaving a bar when my best friend David was driving uh, one of our friends, uh, Shane's Corvette. And he decided, oh, I'm going to bark the tires when I leave the parking lot. And I'm behind him, so he takes off. He hits second gear, but the tires stick. At that point, it just shot off like a rocket. But the problem is he lost control and started swerving back and forth, car coming to him head on. The back of the car goes in the ditch. Now, I'm seeing all this happen. Now, let me tell you what was going on inside the car. Inside the car, Brian, which is a, one of the friends who was riding in the car, decided to call the owner of the car and say, hey, listen to your car. <laughs> <laughs> and so he's listening to it, and then next thing he knows, disconnect. And that when it disconnected, it was the same time that the back the wheels were hitting the ditch. Now, before my party days in college, and what I'm telling this story is, is amazing to be here, uh, I, was, I came from five generations of blue-collar workers and farmers from eastern North Carolina. I didn't go straight to college. I actually drove a 100-ton bulldozer in a mine. Now, after I was tired of hearing the beep, 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 I decided to go to college. And now we're back at the rest of the story. The good news is they lived, no issues. They actually came out of the ditch. And they call me, hey man, did you see that? Uh, yeah, <laughs> I did. But you should see all the mud in the back of the Corvette now. So we drive to a car wash, we're washing the car off. Shane calls, hey, what happened? Oh, nothing, uh, we just dropped the phone, lost connection. <laughs> and I'm just shaking my head the whole time. I'm shaking, I wasn't even in the car. Now, we were very reckless when we were in college, as you can tell. So the next day, he's, he's looking at his car. He's like, hey, there's mud in the rims. We're like, I don't know how that happened. <laughs> Have no clue. At that point, he t you know, it's all over with. He forgets about it. Why I share that story with you today is just like your technology. You need someone to protect your technology and not miss that one spot. Don't be careless with your technology. Now, what my company does is we're cybersecurity experts. We have offices all over the East Coast, and we provide uh, services all across the globe for cybersecurity services. Now, one of the things I find customers think, oh, you know, I'm too small. They're not going to hack me. I'm not big enough. I don't have anything to hide. No one's hacked me. I will tell you, the things on your phones today, I've hacked a few of you already. And things that y'all were looking at last night, y'all need to clean that up. <laughs> just kidding, I have not hacked anybody's phones today. <laughs> Do not think that just because you're a small firm or you don't have a lot of money, don't think that someone's not trying to hack you. Everybody is vulnerable. So make sure you're taking care of yourself. There's one thing that's passed January this, this year that passed in the Supreme Court of Pennsylvania that stated that a business owner and a business has the fiduciary responsibility to protect their employees' personal data, okay? Remember that. So just because you don't have to do HIPAA, PCI, and you just own a mortgage company or a real estate company, think about that because if you've got employees, they can sue you. Now, it only has only happened in Pennsylvania, but if it happens one, as we all know, it's going to spread. So be very careful with your technology. Just because you get hacked and you're a small business and you don't have HIPAA data or financial data does not mean that you are not responsible. One thing I want you to learn from today is do not gamble and risk your technology. All right. <laughs>